In this part one out of two video, we will talk and show the differences between the rigid and the flexible approach in S Foundation. In this presentation, we will go over a short example of a spread footing with a thin white slab. But first, let's see the contents of these two part videos. In part one, we will show the differences between these two approaches, rigid and flexible, and we will see the example I just mentioned, spread footing with thin white slab. For part two, we'll take a look at a second example, an isolated footing with smaller, thicker pad, plus a large lateral load by using the rigid and flexible approach. And example number three will be a pretty similar example with a slight large lateral load, just using the flexible approach. And what are the differences? For the rigid approach, this is only applicable to isolated footings. The method assumes that the pad is entirely rigid, which makes it easier to compare it to hand calculations. On the other hand, for the flexible approach, this can be applicable to any type of foundation. The method uses the underlying finite element model, and the pad flexibility is based on the thickness and material properties which are assigned to the pad. This, of course, is a more accurate approach, but it requires more computational time. Now let's take a look at the first example. We have a pad of 5 meters by 5 meters and thickness of 0 0.3 meters. Pedestal is half meter, half meter, and one meter high. And we have a compressive force in the set direction of 1,000 kilonewtons. Some assumptions we have for this example. We are ignoring the self-weight of the concrete and soil. And since this geometry was chosen specifically to illustrate these concepts, meaning that it's not representative of an actual foundation design, for this reason, we are not concerned about the reinforcement checks. And we will ignore the rebar. Now let's jump into S foundation. And here is S foundation. For this example, I'm going to use the Canadian concrete code and keep the default parameters. I'm going to run every code check for the rigid and flexible approach. And I can start defining my isolated footing. So I went ahead and already defined the dimensions for pad and the pedestal. And I just need to click here at some point on my grid just to place my foundation. You guys can see if I select the spring support tool, it jumps right ahead into the final element view. And you can see the pad has non-linear compression only ground springs. Meaning that if they experience tension, uh, they will not provide stiffness to my pad. Then I can jump right ahead into the reaction load tool. Select again my object view. I have created one compressive load, so I'm just going to assign it 1,000 kilonewtons compressive just at the tip of my pedestal. Uh, just to let you guys know, if I see the final element analysis, I'm running a nonlinear static analysis for this example. And I'm ready to go to run, analyze, and go check this model. And it comes up with a message telling me the soil sediment code check is not available for the one layer soil I have, which is okay and it's a expected message. It's just the software letting you know. So I click okay and I can start looking at the code check results. Let's focus on the loss of contact and soil bearing checks. Both of these checks uh, are related to the connection between the pad and the underlying soil. If I expand this window, you guys can see that the loss of contact check has a capacity of 0 0.001. The capacity is user defined, and this represents a ratio of the pad area that is allowed to have zero pressure, which indicates an uplift. In this situation, for the flexible check, I'm getting a demand of 0 0.05, meaning that 5% of the pad is losing contact with the soil. And compared to the rigid approach, uh, we, get, uh, we can see that we're getting a zero uh, demand. Now let's take a look at the soil bearing pressure check. We can see the flexible right here. So if I click on it, I have an allowable pressure of 300 
KPA using the flexible analysis, and the demand is about 90 KPA. This demand leads to a utilization ratio of 0 0.3, and for the rigid analysis, if we check the soil bearing for the rigid, we can see the demand is about around 40, giving us a utilization ratio of 0 0.13. When checking this, it will be beneficial to also check the soil bearing pressure demands by using this tool here, soil bearing pressure. So if I select the rigid approach, rigid method, I see a value of 40 all around my pad, which is consistent with the assumption that the pad itself is entirely rigid. Now if we look at the flexible approach, we can see the pressure concentration on the, the pedestal is much higher than the surrounding areas. Even though the area under the pedestal can still be considered rigid, the remainder of the pad remains flexible. And remember that this thickness is about 300 millimeters. Since we are only applying a single axial load in the pedestal and ignoring the self-weight of the soil and self-weight, the response of the edges is, it tends to be to uplift. As you guys can see here is uh, close to zero. With this said, the right combination of plat pad flexibility and high loading can cause the rigid and flexible analysis results to diverge from one to another. In this scenario, the rigid approach assumptions uh, may not be valid and the flexible approach should be the preferred option. It is worth mentioning that this example can be also found in S Foundation's help system. If you go to the help menu, you select online tutorials and videos and you will be able to see the rigid versus flexible analysis method. Thank you for watching and please keep an eye for the second part video.